Before we start this one, just want to say welcome to my new sponsor, Green Apple Dental Clinic. Thank you very much for uh, coming on board and to the others, as you can see in the corners, thank you again for, uh, for sticking with me. Um, and again, I've got one more spot up here. Send me a message if, uh, if you'd like to uh, get up there. But um, yeah, to the video. Welcome back to another one. In this one, we're gonna be talking about buying a queue and what queue suits you for when uh, you need to purchase your next queue or your first queue. So the talk is pretty much when people are buying queues for the first time, they go out and look for an expensive one, whether it's 500, 1,000 or 750. At the end of the day, I don't think the price matters. Now, this is all just my opinion. Now, I know everyone's got their own opinions, but when it comes to buying a queue, I promise you a $200 one compared to a five or a $1,000 or a $2,000 one won't make a difference to the way you play. So in my opinion, if I were to go buy a queue for someone or brought you along with me and we chose a queue for you, I would look at say 10 different queues or 15 or however many they have there, and line them all up and then what I would do is get you to play a few little shots just little touch shops or whatever with the queue, get the feel of it, and then whichever queue that you like out of that 10 or 15, then that's the one you pick up and buy. Whether it's $5, $10, whether it's 500 or 1,000, that's how you choose a queue. Um, and a few things that can help you along the way is the fact when you are looking for a queue. So my queue is literally just, it's just an old, old Dufferin. That's all it is. It's been laid down to feel like an eight ball queue. And it's about an eight, eight and a half mil tip. It's an LP, LP tip. I did use Altmaster and Blue Diamond for 18 or 19 or 20 years. Uh, and now I'm using the, this, this other tip. It's called an LP. Um, it feels like a Blue Diamond, between a Blue Diamond and a Altmaster. And it works fine. So yes, there's different types of ferrules. There's different types of tips. There's always different types of cues. But at the end of the day, Whatever cue you feel comfortable with or most comfortable with, that's the cue for you. So don't go out buying a $1,000 cue and say, hey, look, I've got a $1,000 cue. It's still gonna work the same. So um, this cue for me is probably worth five or $10, you know, um, but I wouldn't sell it tomorrow for 20,000. So that's how much it's worth to me. Um, at the end of the day, you must get something that you're comfortable with. So I suppose with like, say something like tennis or, you know, I suppose golf, you could, I suppose you could pick up the racket or the club and, and hit it, it might be all right. But when it comes to, you know, little, little touch shots and stuff like that, when it comes to pull cues, it has to feel right in your hand because how many times have you played with your own cue and then gone and played with somebody else's and as soon as you hit the ball, you go, wow, that's actually not my cue. And you can feel it straight away. So um, again, don't go by price. I like like maple. I like one piece cues. I don't like, uh, you know, my first cue in a way was a, was a two piece and I had a graphite one after that. I thought it looked cool. And then uh, got a lot of flack for that. So got rid of that. And um, had uh, I've had a few of these one piece cues now. So. Love it one piece. I love the, the smooth sort of maple look. Um, I don't like the grains because I feel like it 
catches your beard and all that stuff and I can see the grain when I'm looking down the queue. So that's what I like. And just because I like it this way doesn't mean, you know, the next person is. So at the end of the day, however you like it, that's how you get it. And um, don't tell anyone else, you know, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. So so this, this tip, like I said, it's an LP, it's about eight and a half. Now I would recommend anywhere from eight to 10 playing eight ball. No more than 10, 10 mil tip. I think um, 10 would be about maximum for, for eight ball. And if you're gonna play snooker, I would stick between nine and 10 mil. So probably closest to the 10 mil mark playing snooker. But I do play snooker with this as well. So this is in a way my snooker cue and eight ball cue. Um, you know, I've knocked in hundreds with this as well. And it just feels good for me. Um, I don't wanna have the second cue for snooker. So if I do play snooker, uh, I'm, I feel comfortable with this cue. It might not be the perfect cue for it, but um, I like it and, you know, it's all, all for a bit of fun. Uh, the weight on this cue is roughly about 15 and a half ounces. So I had other cues before this. Was, uh, my other cues were around the 13 and 14 ounce. I felt that they were actually a little bit light, but that's again, that's the way I liked it. I like one piece, light cues. Now, because I do play a little bit of snooker here and there, or, you know, um, especially with eight ball, I think around the 15 to 17 mark, the ounce mark is actually quite good for eight ball. You can, you've got good touch and you've got good feel with the cue as well. So you don't want the butt of the cue too thick and you don't want the center part actually too thick as well and the end. So with mine or most cues, they start thick and then they do taper down and then they, they obviously get thinner when you get to the end. So the other thing is you want, it, you want it balanced quite nice as well. So I feel this one's actually quite balanced quite well for what I like. Um, you'll, you'll see a cue when you pick it up and, and you go to play a shot, whether it feels bum heavy or it feels sort of like, um, you know, front heavy or whatever you want to call it. But this cue actually feels, feels quite balanced to me. And um, you can really feel it in other cues. When you pick up other cues, you'll feel when you get down on shots that maybe the, the end of the cue is actually sitting on your bridge quite light or it's actually sitting quite heavy. And especially when you're playing shots too, you can feel it as well. So getting a good weight, a uh, good balance, a balanced cue is also um, viable for, for, I think, you know, playing good touch shots and, and pull as well. So when I say touch shots all the time, most people can pick up any cue and, and hit a long ball in. That's fine. But touch shots is when, you know, you've got some little finicky uh, shots that are only a few inches here, a few inches there, and you've got to play them and play them quite precise. And if you can't do that with your cue, find another one that can, can do it. So, or find a, a top player and get him to actually play a, a few little finicky shots, a few little touch shots or like long little drag shots with your cue. Um, and if you can't do it with your cue, then it means there's a good chance that you're probably not gonna be able to do it as well. So find another cue that can actually play those kind of shots. That way you know you've actually got a good cue as well. So, so when we're talking about touch shots, I mean little shots like this. If you can get your cue, get down, and just play little, little touch shots like that. That's, that's basically all you need to do to find out whether you can actually play those shots with the cue that you like. If you can't, then it's not the cue for you. So even, even a little shot like this, if I wanted to pop that and say stun over to here, maybe just stun to here, all right? Just if your cue can do this, like that. These are shots that I would be practicing if I was buying a cue. So again, even, even something, out of the ordinary, even even like this, if you wanted to, you know, you wanted to see how how much spin you could put on it, or see how the how the cue reacts, you know, you can you can do stuff like that. And if you can play all these shots, if you can play all these shots, so I can put a lot of spin and be okay. Even even if you wanted to do stuff like, and that's I mean, that's still going. That's how much spin can do from it. So even if you wanted to play shots like this with the side or you just wanted to play little just little touch shots like this. 
these are all the all the shots that I would be playing if I were to buy this pew. Even something as simple as this. A drag shot. Just like that. And then even playing, believe it or not, just a shot. Like this. And just getting the feel. Getting the feel of the cue. And if the cue that I'm after can do all these shots, then I would put it aside and try and find something else that can better that. And if I can't, then I would start again or go back and buy that cue. So again, if you can do stuff like that with a cue, that's a cue for you. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be cheap. Whatever, whatever cue that you pick up and it feels good, that's the one you buy. So that's, that's pretty much basically it when it comes to, um, I think, looking for cues. It's, it's not rocket science. At the end of the day, it's what you like. I know everyone thinks, you know, that this brand is good or that brand's good or, you know, obviously I'm not gonna say any names, but at the end of the day, yes, some of those branded cues are very good, but I've tried them before and they're just not for me. So at the end of the day, having a, a $1,000 cue or a $1,500 cue isn't gonna make me play any better. So get something that you like and you enjoy playing with, and then you learn how to play the game with that cue. And don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. So I've done what I've done using just rack cues off the shelf, as you can see, and that's all I've ever played with. This one, and I had another one like it, which I, uh, I sold about six or seven years ago. And um, that's all I've ever really played with. And they're, they're perfect for me. And I, I pretty much will never move from, from this kind of cue because it's just very enjoyable. So I do have a, a breaking cue, which um, is actually my nine ball, which is my nine ball cue. And uh, that is uh, about 13 mil tip, I think it is. Uh, and that's on a Z2 shaft, and um, which is about $250, $300. And the butt of it is actually just a cheap $50 butt that's been sanded down again to feel a bit more like an eight ball cue. So um, that's what I've done with that one. And it works a treat for me. So again, do whatever it takes to make it more comfortable for yourself and not what you think other people are gonna like because there's no point in having a cue that other people like or you know, just because it costs a lot or it's got a certain brand name on it, get something that plays well for you. So, and the good thing about the brake cue is, in a way, yes, the heavier the cue, you can break the balls a little bit better, but the main thing is actually saving, saving your tip. So rather than obviously over six months, breaking the balls a thousand times with this cue, and actually either damaging the tip or wearing it out, I do a lot of that with the nine ball cue and the nine ball cue can take it and can take the small ball as well quite easily. And I save on actually changing tips every few months where I might have to change a tip once every year or two now. So having a breaking cue gives your main cue a rest and um, I found that actually really good. So anyway, hope again you enjoyed a couple of these little tips. Um, thanks again for those that send some of those ideas through with other videos. I've uh, jotted them down and um, I will eventually get to them and, and make them. And again, thank you to these sponsors for, uh, for doing uh, what you do and, and helping me out with the channel as well. And always, I will see you on the next one.